I welcome you all in the name of Jesus. And uh, God bless you so much. This is Pastor Ken Nyaga. Some of you have not met here live. But some of you have met live. So <clears throat> I want to start broadcasting online very soon. So I thought of coming to do some testing on this network here and see how it behaves. Okay, so there are a few things that I would want to speak very briefly. And I want to talk about the giants in your life. Before I start doing that, let me begin with a word of prayer. Lord, I thank you for my viewer right now and those who will come to listen to this broadcast later. I bless their, their lives, oh my Father, and I pray that this message will be a blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Uh, so I want to talk about defeating the giants in your life. Defeating the giants in your life. Do you have a giant in your life? Is there something that you feel like this one is a giant? So I want to read 1 Samuel chapter 14. Sorry, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 4. And there went out a champion out of the camp of Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. Now, this, this was... David, David's time when God was refilling him at that time when Israelites were under heavy oppression from Philistines. And based on the King James Version of the Bible, six cubits and span would make Goliath of a nine feet tall. That's a very huge man. That's a, a giant, the guy who was traumatizing Israelites all the time. Verses 5 says that, and he had an helmet of brass upon his hand and was armed with a coat of mail. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekel of brass. Now, according to my historical research on Goliath's helmet, it weighed roughly 66 pounds. And this brass coat weighed approximately 175 pounds. Can you imagine your neighbor who is nine feet carrying 175 pound of a backpack and a backpack and 66 pounds of you know uh, that kind of a dressing code. I'm sure nobody can stand such a person. This is a true giant. Verse 7 says that, and the staff of his spear was like a weaver's bean, and his spear's hand went 600 shekels of iron, and one bearing a shield went before him. I don't know what is coming into your mind when you hear the Bible describing that kind of a creature. Have you faced Goliath today? Am I talking about a natural Goliath? There was a natural Goliath. But today, I'm sure there are issues ahead of you that look like Goliath. It could be drug addiction. There are many things for their lives. Trying to come out of drugs and addiction. But it's a real monster. They can't come out of it. Others are into sexual immoralities, respianism, gazing, masturbation. People are bringing around all manner of sexual partners. And it has become a monster. You can't come out of it. And I want to tell you, it takes an anointed David to bring down the giant in your life. The Goriath 
in your life. Now, when David showed up, that was a time when the Israelites had already given up. They had given up and they were ready to see now Philistines taking over in their lives. Just like you, some of you, you've got Goliaths in your life. You have um, these monsters, the giants that have shown up. To some of you, they could be poverty. You know, you can't rise. Nobody in your family has listened to any notable level, even financially or other areas of your life. Giants are there in life. People wow. battering giants. And they don't know what to do. And I want to bring to you today some of the things that you can do when you trust God to bring down every giant in your life. Because it is possible. It is possible to see yourself free. It is possible. Now, what are some of the things that probably you can do to overcome a giant in your life? Number one, you need to show up for the battle and you must be ready to fight. We see that from David. Bible says in 1 Samuel 17, 34 to 35, that David sent unto Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of the, his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. So David didn't just defeat the lion and the bear. The, the scripture says that he went after them when they stole what belonged to him. And I see the same attitude David calling it in the battlefield when he was confronting Goriath. Let me tell you, Hiding your hand into the sand does not give you victory. It's time to show up for the battle and get ready to fight. Yes, sometimes we ignore and we think something is going to sort itself out. That one can never happen. David stood up to the occasion. And he decided to face the giant. So there are always giants surrounding us. There are always giants in life. There are always things that we really need to confront. But the decision to show up is where many people fail. You need to show up. You need to show up. David showed up. And even Paul would advise Timothy. And he was telling him, Timothy, in 2 Timothy 4.2, Timothy, you must show up. You know? Stand up. Preach the word. Whether the opportunity is favorable or not favorable, come out and do that business. Number two, don't run from the battle. Now, if you run away, your uncle ran away. If you run away, your auntie ran away. If you run away, your mother, your parents, your brothers, your sisters, your cousins, your friends. That's what they did. But they did not achieve anything. It is not your time to run away. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 17, 24, And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, they fled from him and were so afraid. Look at what they were doing. Every other person was running away. But when David came, he showed up. He did not run away. So if you want to Goriath in your life, running away is not an option. Don't run away. Are you planning to run away? I've seen people running away sometimes. And some literally go out of the country. 
because of a challenge that has come into your life. And then you think that after taking all these years, you'll come back and find that things changed. Now, how do you find things changed? Unless you find somebody died, then things changed. But how does sit change things when you run away? Running away, unless it's from a danger, running away from things that you need to achieve does not make them to come near. You need to confront. The book of Psalms 118 and verse 6, the Bible says that God's now at my side and I'm not afraid who would dare lay a hand on me. That's the attitude. That's the attitude. You need to understand that when God is on your side, there is no chance to fear. Now, point number three, that you need to take note of is do not be afraid. Fear does not bring victory. Fear is not a tool of warfare that will bring you any victory. Second Kings chapter 1 verses 15 says, be not afraid. Be not afraid of them. Deuteronomy 20 verses 1. Be not afraid of them. The Lord thy God is with thee. Second Chronicles 2015, that says the Lord unto you, be not afraid, nor be dismayed by reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Mark chapter 5, verse 36, be not afraid, only believe. Now, it is saying that the word do not fear appears 365 times in the Bible. Why do you want to get afraid? Don't get afraid. Point number four is if you want to overcome your giant, don't worry about what other people may think. Because sometimes people's opinions remove us from the path of victory. Now, you see in 1 Samuel 17, verses 28 to 30, the Bible says, but when David's oldest brother, Erehab, hunt David talking to them. He was angry. What are you doing around here anyway? He asked. What about those few sheep you are supposed to be taking care of? I know about your pride and deceit. You just want to see the battle. What have I done now? David replied. I was only asking a question. Now, some people's opinions are very scary. They will scare you and stop you. That is why their fashion is not your fashion. You need to stand in the grace that God has entrusted you. Sometimes what other people fear is your area of courage. But if you begin now to put yourself in people's opinions, it is going to remove you from your path of victory. You need to keep yourself on the track. People's opinion are good, but not everything is advised. So don't worry about what other people say or what they may think about you. Human beings don't have a thermometer to measure your potential. Probably they say your potential is small because you failed in high school. But how many billionaires do we have who have never stepped in class? What if they measure themselves by what academic system dictates? I came to remind you. You are not a product of people's opinions. You are a product of the opinion from God. You are God's opinion. Rise up. Don't get afraid. It is your time to take over. Point number five. Choose the weapons. Now, you need to understand the kind of a battle that you are fighting. Every battle has its strategy. And in the strategy, there is a weapons of warfare. 
Eliminate anything that can be weakness or that which will restrict you to move into the possibilities of success. Eliminate it completely. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 8 to 40, Saul had his own military clothes and armor put on David, and he gave David a bronze helmet to wear. David strapped on a sword and tried to walk around, but he was not used to wearing those things. I can't move with all this stuff on, David said. I'm just not used to it. So, while King Saul's armor didn't weigh as much as Goliath's, it's generally agreed by historians that his armor weighed between one to 200 pounds. So, if you've never been used to wearing that much kind of a, a weight, eh? it will be heavy and something that you cannot manage. And Saul wanted David to confront Goliath wearing that kind of a, a suit, the armor. But now David is not used to that. You know, he could not even take off. The weapon that David needed was not the armor that Saul had, had used before. David had a revelation from God. And that is why he said, for me, I come to you in the name of the Lord. Sometimes we use outdated weapons to fight the giants who brought our parents, our families down. Those giants are used to those armories. They are used to that armor. You can't do anything with that. You need a revelation. You need a revelation from God. They require something extra. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 10 for that, for the weapons of our warfare are not canon. They are not in flesh and blood, but they are mighty in God. And they have the capacity, the power to overthrow and destroy all strongholds. You have weapons at your disposal, which are undefeatable in every battle that you'll ever face in this life. So you need to know which weapon you need to deploy every time you want to confront a giant. Point number six, you need to understand the rewards of winning. Remember, the, uh, the king had said in 1 Samuel 17, 25, and the men of Israel said, have you seen this man that is come up? Surely to divide Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who killed him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. Now, I want to say this. There is a giant that has been keeping you down. It is everyone in your life, in your family, at work, please. It's your time to come up. Know that every time you defeat a giant, there are rewards. All right? Every time you defeat a giant, there are rewards. Now, when you understand the rewards, it gives you the reason as to why you need to fight to the end without wavering. Praise the Lord. Number seven, and my last point is, do something with what is in your hand. Sometimes your help will not come from what is in the hand of your neighbor. Sometimes the help will not come from the, what is in the hand of your elder brother or your younger sister or in your boss's hands. No. There is something in your hands. It could be faith. Could be you are a man or a woman of prayer. What is in your hands? It could be a gift, a skill. It could be favor. God could have clothed you with a lot of beauty. Something is in your hand. Second Timothy 1.14 says, God well, the spreaded, God-given ability you received as a gift from the Holy Spirit who lives within you. There is something. Do what you can with what you have wherever you are. 
I want to tell you, you could be somewhere at the bottom of the pit. And I thank God because you cannot go any further. It's your time to go up now. I see you coming up in the name of Jesus. In every battle you face, being empowered by the Holy Spirit will guarantee you victory. And your ability to defeat every giant of debt, lack, sickness, and all that, the Holy Spirit will give you that capacity. Let me pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for this listener who is following on this teaching. I pray that every giant that has conquered his life, her life, is now defeated in Jesus' name. I break the power of sickness, disease, lack. Every restriction is lifted in the name of Jesus. Any barrier is withdrawn now in the name of Jesus Christ. Any battle against your life, I declare in the name of Jesus, let that battle come to an end. May the anointing of the Holy Ghost be upon you. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let God arise in your life. As you stand up in the occasion, may the Lord strengthen you. I bless your life in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The Lord bless you so much. This is Pastor Ken Nyaga of Christ Intervention Ministry, Nairobi City Center. We meet at Hotel Accra every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. It's along Kennedy Matipa Avenue, the former Accra Road. We meet at 50th floor every Sunday. And this coming Sunday, we, which will begin at 2.30 up to 5.30 p.m. Please, I invite you for this rally, and I know God is going to bless you. Thank you for being with me, and I wish you a blessed day. Shalom. You'll be victorious.